Hello everyone and welcome to another spot review because currently it's Wednesday, it's maintenance and I can't play my lolly. Um, I'm planning to make a shy if it wasn't obvious already but in the meantime let's talk about the underwater ruins and um, yeah at this point you should know how spot reviews work honestly you should have seen at least one of the other videos in this series if you didn't we will discuss about the money per hour the experience and the skill experience rates and overall i'm gonna give you my uh, impressions about this area what i thought about it and all of that stuff so let's begin hopefully i can get this video done today unless i get distracted by shy but um, yeah I tried to rush this test honestly, uh, I started testing this place 3 days ago and I tried to finish it as soon as possible, I was hoping it would be done before maintenance so I can focus on shy but it is what it is. So let me begin with my equipment, I grinded this place on my level 62 wizard with 261 AP with my newver, my gear is pretty much the same as it was on the stars and video but might as well show it you know uh, this area recommends you to have 230 ap which as always it's pretty much stupid because it never mentions if it's with a kutum with a newver with a green weapon without a weapon whatsoever it just doesn't mention so my personal recommendation is 235 AP with a Kutum. You should have about that much because I would say the monsters hit or not hit, they are about as tanky as the Manshaum monsters, so that should give you some idea about how this place is. If you don't know where the underwater ruins is because the spot was released a couple of weeks ago, then um, yeah, this is some picture. Currently it's maintenance, so I have no idea and I can't I don't want to bother looking up the names of the islands, but you should know that the spot is out in the ocean, not in the ocean ocean, but so around the same ocean as Pirate Island, so that type of ocean. And um, there is this island that has two NPCs on it. One of them sells you Marnie stones and I would like to kill that NPC as soon as possible or at least drag it by force and submerge it into water and the other one gives you a free, not free because it costs 20 energy, a swimming speed buff that you should always take so that you avoid spending money or on the fish costume or some breathing potions. So. First I'm gonna say yes I hate that Marnie NPC because over my 12 and a half hours spent here I kept on having to get to swim back to the surface, go with my ship back to the island, buy Marnie stones, get back on my ship, go back to the spot, to the spot where I, I'm submerging underwater, go into the grinding spot, it's just simply so annoying. I hope in the following weeks, months, the developers will wake up and move that NPC where it's supposed to be, which is in the underwater ruins. In any case, how do you get into this place in case you don't know yet, which you most likely don't? Um, you pick up the swimming speed buff from the NPC next to the Marnison NPC. My, uh, my wizard or ranger will show you on the screen how to do it because it's much easier that way. But basically you pick up this swimming speed buff. There are a couple of portals that you can enter. I don't know all of them because I just didn't care to check about to check all of them. I just found two portals and out of those I I kept on using the one that seemed the most convenient. Once you are at this point, you just leave your ship here so that you can use it to get back to the island when you need more Marnie stones and you just submerge yourself in the water and start d uh, diving straight down and when you hit the bottom of the ocean, by that point you should be you know in front of the gate if you are on the right direction. It's not exactly hard to find it if you enter the gate or portal once, the second time you do it you're gonna automatically know where it is. Once you are inside the cave or not the cave, the bubble, the grinding spot bubble, this is where everything becomes 
easier. Yeah, anyway, you take a left turn, you go straight ahead and you should at some point, if you followed my instructions, my perfect instructions properly, find a cave which has two more NPCs. One of them allows you to repair your gear, which is very nice. It's always nice to have a repair NPC right next to the spot. And the other NPC sells you potions in case you are one of those unfortunate classes that actually needs potions in 2019. So yeah, also these NPCs give you daily quests, which it took me about three to four days, not sure, to test this area. And in this time, I picked up the dailies and did them on every day when they actually resetted so uh, yeah keep that in mind as well you can pick up the dailies i believe one of them or two of them give you dust and the other one gives you some of that uh, essence to make the friends the elixirs not amazing rewards but i guess it's still something if you're gonna grind here you might as well get the free quests from this point in space and time, you exit the cave and you take a left turn. Again, you go straight forward if you're watching the screen and you should reach the rotation. I would like to mention that I used not the worst video done on this place a couple of weeks ago as my reference point throughout my entire testing, let's say, because when I started grinding here, I didn't have any idea about how the place looks, looked like. So I kind of uh, made my own rotation out of his rotation from his video. In my opinion, this place only has one rotation and yes, currently I am showing the rotation on the screen um, because this rotation is about in the middle of the bubble of the grinding spot and with the groups left on the, on the sides, I suppose, I didn't see any packs that would be worth including in a second rotation. The, the area has a lot of elevation and rocks and all of that and I don't think you can let's say this area has at most two usable rotations. The one that I used is uh, kind of small because I'm not sure if uh, currently we still have the event with double respawn rates for this area. If we do, you can extend this rotation with uh, some extra groups ar around the spot because I just didn't include them because I didn't need them. My rotation is kind of the reverse version of what Not The Worst used. How you grind the rotation, you basically try I guess this depends on your class, but on my wizard, I just tried to lure together one or two groups. Um, actually, often it was three groups. I tried to lure as many monsters as I could aggro onto a separate pack that was not aggroed. And then I just spammed, spammed my AoEs over and over until the pack was dead. This spot is the only one where I actually did loot manually from the ground every now and then because the mob density is very high and I felt like why not loot a little bit and get some more trash maybe um, instead of just moving to the next pack and leaving behind like 10 different types of trash. Uh, not the worst on his video, I'm not going to show on the screen because that would be kind of unfair, but I would just, I will just mention it verbally. I will leave a link to his video in the, in either the description or a pinned comment if you want to see it, because it's, I guess, good to see two different perspectives of, uh, of a spot from two different people. So if you want to see his, his video, he grinded 20 hours here and he had tier 4 pets, not like mine. Anyway, just go watch it. Um, he got 6.2 thousand trash per hour with tier 4 pets and back when he tested it, the area was uh, very contested, it was around the release. I, I'm not sure if it was contested on every single one of his 20 hours because all of them had around 6,000 trash per hour. If you look at my chart, I guess this is the point where I bring it up. I managed to average around 7,000 trash per hour with only tier 3 pets and not tier 4 pets, so that's an improvement. Um, I didn't encounter any PvP whatsoever in my 12 hours here. I only found two people 
in the area and switching servers once always solved the problem for me. So these days people kind of gave up on the spot and you can expect 7000 trash per hour pretty easily if you clear as fast as I did. For clearing speed, um, I'm pretty sure I can increase my monsters per hour a little bit because as I said I was occasionally looting manually which means I was not moving from one pack to another fast enough. Um, I would say I can push 3000 monsters per hour maybe but my average was about 2.8 thousand monsters per hour including the first run which was slightly slower because I didn't have an idea what rotation I want to grind. So besides that, um, the reason why this test is 12 and a half hours is because of the loot table. So let's talk about that one. The trash here is actually pretty expensive, not exactly actually, it's 2.3 thousand trash but you get a lot of it, you get 7000 of it per hour which would mean that you make at least 16 millions per hour or so just from the trash alone. That's pretty nice, but the disappointment comes in the other drops. So you get some black magic crystals which are mech, they don't sell very much, I bundled all of them together, as you can see I barely got any, and uh, they are these four types of crystals, swiftness, agility, memory and ascension. They are, they are all about the same price, but not a lot of money from them anyway. Um, fragments do drop, drop here, you don't get a lot of them, they don't even sell on the marketplace, the, they are um, on the minimum price and there are a lot of them registered on the minimum price, nobody actually buys them these days. Blackstones, you will hardly see any of them drop here. Kafra stones, the same story, you get either none or maybe one if you're lucky, two if you have some amazing luck in one session. Dust is um, also pretty mech, the sessions where you see that I had the 10, 15 or, or 11, those are most likely runs where I turned in my daily quests which also give you dust. So keep that in mind. Uh, black energy residue pretty inexistent for this area if you are planning to grind those for uh, I guess dragon slayer weapon this is not it. Uh, Abyssal essence this one actually is pretty nice it's a higher drop rate than what I got at Proti Cave so I will give it that. Petals nobody cares about that I got one magical shard or whatever the name is the yellow item used to craft costumes. I got two ancient creature scales which I I have no idea what to use them for. You, you have to have five of them just like relic scrolls and you make some form of boss out of them I think. But um, these also are listed at the minimum price on the marketplace and uh, uh, in quite high quantity. So I suppose the scroll or whatever you craft with them is not that profitable. The Tungrad ring, actually this one should be zero because I don't know why I placed there a one. I didn't get a single Tungrad ring in my 12 and a half hours spent here. I didn't get a single black shard and I didn't get a single red shard, which is why I tried to grind here over 10 hours. I tried to push this spot as much as possible, I, I wanted to stop the test as soon as I got one Tungrad ring to at least have that on the loot table, but sadly the maintenance arrived before, you know, I got 12 and a half hours before the maintenance. And I don't think I'm gonna add more hours to the spot because at this point I lost my hope whatsoever. Um, again, to reference not the worst video, he had tier 4 pets, he had the Kamasil Blessing, I don't have a Kamasil Blessing and I don't have a loot scroll, he didn't have the loot scroll either, but he got 2 Tungrad rings, so 2 of them in 20 hours, he got I believe 4 black shards in 20 hours and 2 red shards in 20 hours, so from my 12 hours I should at the very least expect one Tungrad ring, maybe two black shards and one red shard. That's what I should expect. And with those I am averaging 40 millions per hour for this spot. But since I didn't get those, the official average, for me at least, was 25 millions per hour, which is very very disappointing. 
if everyone agrees with me let's just uh, let's just all agree that you should get a tungrat ring in uh, 10 to 12 hours if not the ring at least you should get one of the one of each uh, shards to make it to craft the ring so i'm going to leave a one here on the load table and say that the official money per hour value for this place is 35 millions per hour because it seems quite quite bad rng that i didn't get a single ring or pieces for the ring in 12 hours so that's that for the money per hour uh, pretty disappointing as i said i was expecting a lot more honestly i was hoping this spot would get close to 60 millions per hour just because the ring is that expensive but mm, it didn't get there there is um, now that we are getting into the experience part of the video there is one extra session on my ranger which i used for experience purposes but i didn't include it because it was very slow and i didn't get any rare drops to actually be worth including it in the table so let's talk about experience experience wise this place is actually very good um, and I'm not, I'm not even exaggerating that the spot is very good so how i tested experience you already know at this point but my main character is level 62 for this area i had to bring a level 61 to keep my consistency and see the experience rates at level 61 this chart over here is the experience from my ranger test which was extremely slow at 1.3 thousand monsters per hour less than half of what my wizard can get but then i just scaled up these two values the experience and skill experience to match what my wizard would get in terms of monsters per hour and this is the experience that my wizard with his clearing speed should get at level 61. I basically just tried to fill 3 Marni stones, so 750 monsters and then that was it. The Marni stone experience is pretty okay-ish, it's not terrible, it's not amazing, but since you only kill 3000 monsters per hour, you can't really expect a lot as opposed to Vogans or so where you kill 5000 monsters per hour. The normal experience is where this spot actually shines. The normal experience is close to what you can get at Miramok Ruins if you average around 2000 trash per hour with your party. So since the normal experience is so high and this spot also has Marni zones, overall the total experience is actually higher than, than what you can expect at Mirmok Ruins. So that was actually surprising to me. The skill experience is meh, it's it's honestly pretty bad. You can it's about let's say 60% of what you can make at Kahaz. So skill experience is meh. It's not uh, bad, but you shouldn't come here for that. But what I would recommend if you look at the 300, which nowadays is 450% comparison, um, comparing this spot, the underwater ruins, to the other areas, you can see that it's the highest experience. Applying 450% to the experience rate, so buffing the normal experience, you, you get the most experience, at least for, for myself, for my wizard, at the underwater ruins, which is honestly yeah it's pretty impressive i didn't expect this whatsoever i i thought that it's pretty much set in stone that fogans bandits and nagas are the best experience in the game but i suppose the developers woke up and finally made spots that you know can contest with that so i would say if you are level 61 trying to go for level 62 and you don't want to grind to Mirmok ruins maybe consider coming to the underwater uh, ruins because the experience is actually very good at least if you have the 235 ap with a kutum to grind here efficiently if you have the ap you should come here for experience if you are pushing for 62 that's my recommendation skill experience wise meh but at level 61 most people don't need that many skill points the st I also fixed, I should point out, um, if you didn't see my stars and video from a couple of days ago, I said the experience rate may have been broken and that I need to test this area, the underwater ruins, to actually fix it. And I fixed it. This is what I believe should be the 
Star's End experience rate, which is, yeah, pretty good. It's actually as good as Naga's, and it might actually be closer to what you can get at Underwater Ruins. I will show it now, since now I actually can talk about it. You know, taking stuff in order. We are done with money per hour, we are done with the official experience rates, so I had this one run on my wizard, the level 62, so my wizard is at level 62 and I also saw the experience rate on my wizard on his first, very first run, the 75 minutes one, and uh, if I have the exact same experience rate, 100%, this is what my wizard got at level 62, and this is what my wizard should get at level 61. The skill experience should scale, it should be pretty much identical, but for whatever reason it's not. It's just slightly higher at level 62. I'm not sure why, because I checked the, the screenshots and the experience buffs multiple times, but I believe it's because I don't have seconds on my screenshots, so this run may have been 75 and a half minutes, and this one may be 33 and a half minutes, so maybe that's why, just small fluctuations. And also the experience at the level 62, it barely moves one digit, so that's that. The experience scaling, from what I've seen, between 61 and 62 is between 500 and 550 percent. It's around around 520 or 550 percent difference. So where I said in my stars and video that the experience might be two times um, if you, if I actually pop up the chart, this one, where it shows it's supposed to be two times the experience of level 61, it's not two times, it's more like five times. So if I fix it and put here five times, I could even put 5.5 because that might be true as well. But still, going with five times the experience, then at 61, I should get those experience values for stars end. So, turns out Star's End is also pretty good for experience, especially since it scales up, you know, I don't have the AP to grind there, so for people with 200 and 280 AP, it actually could be potentially the best experience in the game. So, I guess if you go for if you want to go for level 63, go at Star's End, but I'm going off topic because this video is not for Star's End. I'm going to no, wait, I forgot the ranking, so the rankings are um, pretty underwhelming for this spot in a way because I didn't fully know what to give it. For experience, it's an easy S++ with my new standards because it's the best I've seen so far for experience. Skill experience, just a B because it's average, it's meh. Um, money per hour, I have no idea. With one Tungrad ring in 12 hours, it would be about 35 million per hour, but it could easily be 60 million per hour or 50 million per hour. This is a very RNG heavy spot, so I don't know. Maybe a B. Uh, for convenience, I just hate the NPC, the Marnie NPC, that it's not underwater, and a couple of other bad stuff such as there's only one usable rotation that I've seen so far. The area used to have PvP, now I don't know if it has PvP these days because people don't seem to go there, it might change after this video, but yeah, overall A- minus for convenience, uh, another A- minus spot overall, just like half of these other spots on the chart. But yeah, I'm gonna end the video here because I want to go back uh, into the game and play my shy. Um, have fun playing with your lolly. I'm gonna make sure I have fun with mine. Until next time, stay happy. I will see you with uh, Polyforest, most likely, because I already tested about 8 hours at Polyforest. And I only stopped because I saw that it, the area is supposed to get Marnie stones. So I would like to test the rest of the hours with Marnie stones. So until those come out, I might test a different area. If we get Marnie stones in this patch notes, which I didn't get to read yet, then Polyforest next time. So yeah, bye.